Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing open door technology stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Open door technologies makes instant cash offers on homes through an online process. It repairs the properties that it purchases and relists them for sale. The company is headquartered in San Francisco, California was founded in 2014. It went public via SPAC in December 2020, raising almost $1 billion, and it trades on the NASDAQ and Mexican Bolsa. It also provides mobile, application-based home buying services along with financing. Property owners bid to sell their properties on the online platform. When the bid is accepted, the company purchases the property as is, charging a fee. Open Door then repairs the home before relisting the property. Through this process, Open Door carries an inventory of homes. The average time a property is held by the company is 90 days. The company sold 18,799 homes in 2019, but only half of that in 2020, 9,913. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 8.7 billion market cap. They're trading at $15 a share and they have 578 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they had negative free cash flow in 2018 and 19, but they did have positive in 2020, but negative in a trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and that's negative every year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grew a lot from 2018 to 2019. Then it was cut in half in 2020 and decreased even more in a trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that was $225 million in a trailing 12 months, peaking in 2019 at $300 million. Below that is operating expenses. I'm sure marketing is a big operating expense for this company. Gross profit minus operating expense gives you your operating income. And they do have negative operating income because they haven't hit break even yet. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. They paid over $100 million of interest in 2019. 51 million in a trailing 12 months. Below that is other income and expenses. And if it's negative, it's usually an asset impairment. If it's positive, it's usually a gain on an asset sale. Then the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which of course is negative every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. They had a big negative in 2018, negative 1.2 billion. Then they improved it a lot to negative 272 million. They did have a positive in 2020, which is interesting, but a negative in a trailing 12 months. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And that was negative every year except in 2020. They had a big negative free cash flow in 2018, so they issued 700 million of capital stock and added about $1 billion of debt to run their business. In 2019, they also had a negative free cash flow, so they added about 300 million of capital stock and about 300 million dollars of debt. In 2020, they did have positive free cash flow, and it looks like they used that free cash flow to pay down debt. They issued 1.4 billion of debt, paid down 2.2 billion, so they reduced their debt load about 800 million dollars in 2020. They did go public in 2020, which gave them 888 million dollars of cash flow. So every time the company issues capital stock, which it has done a lot of the past few years, that increases the shares outstanding, which makes your shares less valuable. Let's look at the capital structure. $2.4 billion of equity, $800 million of debt. They're 75% equity, 25% debt. Their net debt is negative $1.3 billion. So they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $1.3 billion of cash left over. They're sitting on a ton of cash. Their WAC is 10.10% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated 7 years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value which is all cash flows past year 7, that's 6.9 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. 
we get a value of the company of $3.9 billion. We divide that by 578 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 672. They're trading at 1509, so they're trading at a 125% premium. It's a sell according to the model. The way I valued this company, I estimated they would hit $10 billion of revenue in 2027. And they would convert roughly 5% of that revenue into free cash flow. This type of business has a lot of upfront costs when buying the homes, so their margins are pretty slim. I'm pretty bearish on this company because I've seen a lot of real estate companies over the past couple of decades try to come in, shake the market up, but none of them were successful. I just think real estate is too important to each community. It supplies a lot of jobs to every single community, and people have such strong relationships with their real estate agents. It's almost like their family and it probably is their family in some towns or their close friends. I do see a market for this company, but I just don't think it's gonna disrupt the real estate market as much as everybody thinks it will. That doesn't mean the stock price can't go up. The stock price can go way up to over $100, $200 a share, even if the company's losing money. But I think in the long term, this company won't be that successful. That's just my opinion. Five analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $29. The low was 17, the high was 40. This is a stock price since it started trading. It started trading as a SPAC, so it was pretty flat. This is probably around the time they announced they were going to acquire Open Door and the stock price was really driven up. Then it came back down when people took in their profits. And then when they actually closed the deal, the stock price was driven up past $32, $33. But as you know, shortly after an IPO, the stock price usually comes crashing down, which it did in this case. This is ARK's holdings on Open Door. Kathy Wood runs ARK. And this purple bar is how many shares they have. And you could look on the left to figure out how many shares they have. You can see it hit 2 million shares in October 2020. Then it peaked at about 6.5 million shares in March, but it looks like she sold off at this point, and it's currently sitting at about 4.5 million shares. And this is the price she paid per share. So it was roughly $20 a share when she first bought it. She kept buying the stock even as it went up in price. Looks like she bought it once at $35 a share. It looks like she sold off some shares at sub 20. So she took a loss on these shares. And this purple dotted line is her average share price. So it's around $20 per share she's paying. Besides Tesla, I think this is Kathy Wood's biggest investment. Their stock went up 40% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 39%. The low was 10.55, the high was 39.24. And the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is a really liquid stock. 11 to 12 million shares are traded each day. Of the 578 million shares outstanding, 357 million are on float. So it has a fairly low float. 58% are held by institutions and 6% of the shares on float are shorted. This stock has definitely struggled lately. In the past 90 days, it's down almost 50%, whilst industry is down 20% and the market is up 2%. In the past 30 days, this stock is down 23%. Its industry is down 4%, the market is down 1.5%. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 16%, its industry 33%, and the market 15%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 35%, its industry 12%, and a market 9%. In the past five years, their annual earnings decreased 29%, its industry increased 9%, and a market 12%. In the past year, their earnings decreased 53%, its industry decreased 3.5%, but the market increased 20%. The biggest shareholder is SoftBank at 12.7%, then Kosla Ventures, Access Industries, the investor Eric Chung Wu, and last is Vanguard at 5%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Their price to sales is 4.2. That means investors are paying $4.20 for $1 revenue. That's a pretty good price to sales ratio. Their price to book is 3.7, which is also a pretty good ratio. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative return on invested capital, negative interest coverage ratio, and negative ROE. They do have a high current ratio because all the money they got from going public recently. So they have over $2 billion of cash on their balance sheet and $840 million of inventory. 
The company is well capitalized. They only had negative 175 million of free cash flow and 2.5 billion dollars of working capital. So they have a lot of cash to work with. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of three other companies in the same industry as Open. And if Open has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse than all the price multiples. They have the highest current ratio of all the companies. They're the only company with a negative ROE. They do have the lowest amount of debt compared to the other companies. And they're the smallest company on this list. Although they're not a small company at close to 9 billion market cap. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 125% premium. I do think this is a risky stock. Although they can become a really successful company, I just question their business plan. And I think there's going to be a lot of big roadblocks ahead. I rank their free cash flows 3 out of 10, their revenue 5 out of 10, and their ratio is 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.